right, everybody ready? All right, let's get the show on the road. All right, well, good morning. Uh, happy Friday to everybody. Spring is in the air, and that means it's spring cleaning time for everybody. I'm doing a little bit of my house these days, uh, not as much as I'd like, but uh, uh, it is that time of year, uh, and that includes for the city of New Bedford. Uh, and so we're having a press conference today to talk about all the spring cleaning efforts in our city. A, a clean city is a city that uh, is inviting to people, that people honor and appreciate, and, uh, and uh, a clean city is one that uh, begets more cleaning. When we see things picked up, when things look neat and bright and sharp, uh, we all are, feel compelled to, to do a little bit more. Clean city is also a city that's safer. Uh, places where you see blight and garbage and graffiti are places that tend uh, to be places that have more crime. Uh, so it's, it, we've spent a lot of time and effort and resources in New Bedford trying to make our city look sharp. And, and, and I, I feel very strongly that just because we're a city, not a suburb, not an affluent place, doesn't mean that, uh, that uh, somehow the standards should be any lower. The standards are high in New Bedford. We have a beautiful city. Our residents uh, expect uh, and deserve to have a clean place, and that's what we intend to give them. But it's a constant effort, and this time of year, is, is, it's especially difficult, so that means that we have to pull out uh, all of the stops. So we want to talk a little bit about what we're doing today and also talk in particular about uh, the efforts, the ongoing efforts of, uh, of Sheriff Tom Hodgson's office in uh, making our city cleaner because it's a real key component of our overall effort here. We, uh, I'm not going to steal the sheriff's thunder about the, the details, but it's, I think it uh, suffices to say that it's certainly in the visible areas of the city along highways as we are today, it's a really key component. Uh, so let me talk a little bit about what we're doing. So um, you know, we are, so, so out and about in the city, uh, cleaning is a, a multi-departmental task. Uh, and it's a task that is also picked up by the private sector as well. As far as the city government goes, it is largely a task uh, that falls to the Department of Public Infrastructure. And today we have our Deputy Commissioner Zebaruda uh, with us, uh, who uh, will talk a little bit about, uh, in detail, about uh, DPI's efforts around, uh, around uh, cleanups. But just to give you a couple of examples, um, <clears throat> DPI is now working on cutting 400 acres of grass so that grass includes not only grass, it includes dandelions like those and weeds and other things, but uh, keeping, keeping the grass down counts. It counts to keeping down rodents, of course, and, 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 other, and other problems and collecting garbage, but it also, you know, a clean cut grass makes a place look safe, uh, look safe and neat. And again, that's part of the image that we want to project. DPI collects garbage on a weekly basis from 600 trash barrels. I mean, again, a huge undertaking that they, uh, that they uh, that they do with with fidelity uh, all day every day, and I think it's uh, it's really a tribute to uh, to their hard work that uh, they, they get it done. Um, street sweeping is another thing that uh, that they do as well, and that has benefits for a wastewater system. You take the sand out of the streets; it means there's less grit in the system, it means that it costs less to maintain in the long run. But we also want the street gutters to look sharp. Um, one thing that I will say today. As a, a preview of our city budget is that we are buying another street sweeper. See these, yes, hold your applause. This is, these are the things that mayors get excited about. These are the details we live in, because you have to. City Councilor Namely Carney, former City Councilor Tom Hodgson, will tell you all the same. And this is the stuff you, you hear about from residents, but it is also important. You live in these details. So I get excited about street sweepers. We don't have one to present to you today, but it's it's something that we'll present to the council. I know the council has been very supportive of, uh, of, of those types of projects because it makes a big difference. Uh, let me just tell you a couple of other things. So we spend a lot of time, and there'll be some other folks that we'll introduce uh, as, as well in a minute. Marissa perez Dormitzer, who is the, the city's recycling coordinator, will talk a little bit about our recycling efforts. Recycling's big in New Bedford. When we went to automated trash last year, we doubled recycling overnight. A fun fact that I like to tout all the time because it's uh, it, it really speaks to uh, our uh, just how progressive we are as a as a city, and uh, and Lynn Kosh, who has headed up Operation Clean Sweep, which is already off to its uh, 2016 season, and and uh, they do a fabulous job uh, marshaling volunteers to uh, to clean up 
uh, our city's ward by ward, and, and we can't have a clean city if we don't have volunteers, a, a core of volunteers doing exactly what Lynn does and, and her group does in setting a great example. So we'll talk about that in a second. But I wanted to, uh, to turn to Sheriff Tom Hodgson, who is, uh, whose efforts extend countywide. Obviously, he is the Bristol County Sheriff's, and so he, uh, his efforts uh, to clean uh, not only, uh, not limited to New Bedford, but really uh, picking up uh, garbage all over Bristol County, especially along highways, but in, in many other places as well. And the sheriff has really made a commitment. He understands, apart from his days as a city as a city councilor, but uh, understands his, in his bones that making uh, our public spaces look good may, make for a uh, higher quality of life um, in so many ways, in so many fundamental ways. And he's, uh, since my time in office, uh, you know, has done a, an awful lot working with City Councilor uh, Naomi Carney, who uh, heads up that effort for him and her day job. Uh, they do, they've done a fabulous job putting uh, inmates to work to clean up uh, areas like this behind us. So this is an area that, uh, that the Sheriff's Office cleaned up uh, recently, and, uh, and it looks good. And if, uh, and if we want more people to honor that sign over there, if your cameras can uh, focus in on way over there in a moment, you'll see that it says, don't litter. We want, we want to emphasize that. Maybe we should put it up on the billboard over there too. Uh, but, but the Sheriff's Office, headed up by, by Sheriff Tom Hodgson, has, uh, has been great, a great partner, doing lots of work, and uh, his efforts have the added benefit of saving taxpayer dollars, uh, as well as, because we can't get to everything, the Massachusetts Department of Transportation can't get to everything along highways, and so uh, he's filling a, 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 a very important gap, and it also has... Um, has benefits, rehabilitative benefits for inmates as well to get them out, to get them, uh, get a hard day's work in, that to get, help get them on track. And so uh, he'll talk more about the program. A couple of things that I wanted to highlight, and not just this space and a lot of the, the off ramps that, that he's working on right now, but things like uh, light poles. We had painted, let's see, how many light poles? It was 800 light poles last year. So you see that the light poles, the, the Washingtonian, the old fashioned antique light poles, especially in the central part of uh, the city were all repainted. The sheriff's office did that. And they did it over a course of a couple of weeks. It looks great. It got done very fast, and people love it. Uh, picnic benches. I mean, you name it. There's a lot of parks, baseball fields. Uh, they're doing it, and they're doing it very, very well. So, Sheriff, I really want to just uh, take the opportunity to say thanks. I mean, it really does make a difference, and it's a real big. It is an important part of the city's uh, overall cleanup efforts. Thanks. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, Look, I, I will tell you, I'm, I'm excited about the street sweeper too, Mayor, but um, I, what I'm really more excited about is uh, Mayor John Mitchell and his continued efforts to find proactive ways to keep the city clean, to keep it safe, and to uh, importantly find resources that aren't costing taxpayers additional money. And, and since the mayor's been in, I've, I've paid close attention to not only his intellect and his ability to to be creative and and also put forth uh, important initiatives for the city but his passion for the people of new bedford in the way that he understands that in this partnership that cleaning up the areas in the community build pride he spoke of it earlier it's uh, like the broken window theory if you leave places uh, littered there are people who are going to start to settle in and say, hey, nobody's paying attention. This is the place where we can hang out and be involved in illicit activities. And suddenly the neighborhoods start to decline. But this mayor, Mayor Mitchell, has understood and has taken action to move forward to make sure that we're moving in the opposite direction, that the people in those neighborhoods around this city are empowered because they're starting to see that the neighborhood's starting to take a whole different look, a different complexion, and that it does matter that he's paying attention to the, the smallest of details. And so really the thanks goes to Mayor Mitchell for his continued great work, uh, for his focus on, on um, keeping people safe in this city and making it a place, as he said earlier, pleasing for people to come to. People driving to Cape Cod or coming down from New York or wherever they're coming from uh, may want to stop off at one of the great restaurants here in the city but decide if there's tires and all kinds of garbage along the way that they see to keep on going. And so this is about economics, this is about public safety, and this is about really, uh, when all said and done, a mayor who gets it and is doing a phenomenal job. 
Uh, we're, I, I spoke to the mayor prior to this press conference and, and doubled down on our commitment that we will do whatever we can to continue to partner with him when he requests uh, any of our services. And as he said, we've, I think we've done um, somewhere close to, I think over a month or two, uh, we've built 30 to 40 park benches at his request to start to, to provide more, more leisure space for people in the, in the parks and so forth. And we're going to um, continue doing whatever he needs us to do uh, because um, that's what partnerships are all about. And I think that's what the people expect of us in government. So, Mayor, congratulations to you and thank you for the great work you're doing as a mayor and the proactive approaches that you're taking. And I just want to say thank you to Naomi, who, who coordinates our program. She's done a phenomenal job getting our inmates out into the communities and, and helping to, um, to clean them up. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Sheriff. All right. Um, next up, I wanted to uh, just, uh, I also wanted to uh, mention the, uh, the contributions of the trial court team that also uh, it does an awful lot of clean and pick up and odd jobs around the city, which is also very helpful, headed up by Tommy O'Neill, who couldn't be here today, but uh, really want to say thanks to them uh, as well. They do an awful lot of work in our city. Uh, next up, I wanted to call uh, Deputy uh, Commissioner of the Department of Public Infrastructure, Zabaruda, to talk a little bit about DPI's efforts, just to round out the description of uh, our, our overall cleanliness efforts. Zeb. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, public infrastructure, we've initiated our spring cleanup. And uh, it's an exciting time of year, every year. Um, it's usually that first time you go out and you cut the grass for the first time at your house. You, you start washing the windows on the outside, weather's changing, and, and, and we put it into high gear. Um, spring cleanup, that, that includes our street sweeping. What we try to do every year after a long winter is we start at one end of the city and hit every single street, removing all that sand, all the grit, all those bottles that may have been sitting there on the snow, ice, etc. And we go throughout the whole city. After completing that, we continue to clean the city throughout the city, throughout the year. What we do is we focus in on our problem areas, we focus in on our main streets, all the high visibility businesses, industrial areas, and that effort continues throughout the entire year. We're cleaning our parks, our brand new branches that fall throughout the year, uh, some stubborn leaves that have stood on the trees and now have fallen over the winter time. Uh, we start to cut our grass. We, we begin reinstalling all the benches and barrels that we've taken all, out over the entire winter. Uh, benches that have been broken, benches that need painting, etc. Those are all going back as we speak right now. Uh, and now when we talk about pots, it's a great time to discuss uh, um, opening day. It's two days away for, for our youngsters throughout the city. For the past week or two, we've been out there at Hazelwood, Brooklawn, Dyess Field throughout the city, uh, delivering stone dust for ball fields, getting trees trimmed in the parks, starting to cut the grass in the parks. Lines are being painted for parking areas, crosswalks. In other words, springs in the air. And so we're full gear right now cleaning and maintaining all our areas and getting ready so that we have a great opening day on Sunday we're emptying 600 barrels per week as the mayor said we do it seven days a week um, it's a, an effort that we certainly take a lot of pride in and it's a, a, an effort that will continue um, we, we start at one end of the city as we said and we go progressively through the entire city we also, as the mayor mentioned, cut over 400 acres of grass. It's a daunting task when you, when you hear that amount, and that includes all our parks, all our cemeteries, all our common places, uh, along Route 18, around the peninsula in the south end of the city, throughout the entire city. It's 400 acres of, of grass, and that's done every single day. Springs in the air. And a lot of it, we do ourselves, but a lot of it, we do in collaboration with the Sheriff's Office. Um, Sheriff um, Hodgson, Councilor Naomi Kani, um, thank you for, for helping out. Um, we've worked on many projects together. The, the, the light pole painting, over 800 light poles we've painted. Um, picnic tables, we built picnic tables this winter for the first time together. We, we got a, an empty garage, we got, uh, we got the wood, the, 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 the inmates came out, 
Um, and, and you should see the picnic tables. They're absolutely fabulous. They're ready to go out into our parks um, and to be used by all our citizens. And then there's a the street and park cleanup, as you see in this area here. And there's very er various areas throughout the city where we work together. Um, it's a pleasure working with them, um, and, and we thank you for their efforts in uh, augmenting and helping us out throughout the year. Thank you. All right, thanks, sir. So, I, as I said before, the um, so cleaning up the city is a it requires a multi-pronged approach. So uh, it includes also the state. And, and I'm pleased to say that uh, we've had extensive discussions with uh, the Baker and Polito administration that uh, has indicated to us that they are going to be doing regular cleanups on routes 18, 195, and 140. Uh, they will be maintaining the stretches of State Highway in New Bedford. Uh, they know that's very important to us, so I wanted to thank uh, the Governor, Lieutenant Governor, and uh, Secretary of Transportation Pollock for, uh, for that commitment uh, as well. Uh, and it also includes uh, the work of, uh, uh, of volunteers and uh, the preeminent volunteer uh, group uh, uh, whose mission is uh, general neighborhood cleanup is Operation Clean Sweep, which is just a fabulous program in our city uh, that has really been uh, set set the standard. Has been the gold standard for neighborhood cleanup and neighborhood maintenance for uh, in, in the city for a long time. And so, uh, and it's been headed up the whole time by Lynn Kosh. And so Lynn does uh, does wonders for our neighborhoods, and uh, this year is no exception. And uh, I wanted to call Lynn up to talk a little bit about. Uh, about the program and also to use the opportunity as a little bit of a commercial to get some more volunteers out. Right, Lynn? Right, Come on you. up. Well, thank you very much, everyone. I'd like to thank you all for working together to help keep New Bedford clean and keeping the quality of life in New Bedford at the top of your agenda with this, what seems like a small problem of litter and trash that is actually a social problem that could really impact neighborhoods. So thank you all for your collaboration on this project. Operation Clean Sweep is an all-volunteer anti-litter campaign here in New Bedford. We're a grassroots organization. We've been cleaning trash in New Bedford for the last 10 years. There are some quotes that I'd just like to put out. Think globally, act locally. We can't all do everything, but we can all do something. To leave the world better than you found it, sometimes you just have to pick up other people's trash. Please don't litter. Keep New Bedford clean. These are all quotes that I've liked, that I like, I've read, and I use often in my communications with people about litter pickups in New Bedford. <laughs> Representing Operation Clean Sweep, I'm proud of the team that we have put together for the last 10 years. It's a team of people that are not only New Bedford residents, they're from Dartmouth, they're from Fairhaven, and they are the core team of people who organize neighborhood cleanups, educate New Bedford's youth with regard to litter and its negative effects on the environment, and advocate for enforcement of city ordinances with regard to trash and litter. Operation Clean Sweep would not exist without community, would not exist without the volunteers leading by example. In the last 10 years, over 6,500 volunteers have cleaned up over 75 tons of debris from the streets of New Bedford. This wouldn't be possible if people didn't care about their city and about their neighborhoods and where they live. We've educated thousands of youth with our very small education team. And in the last six years, we've worked with Roosevelt Middle School and their students who have cleaned up almost five tons of trash just from their neighborhoods. Community service learning and environmental stewardship are very important lessons for our youth to learn, and we work as much as we can on that education component. Advocating for enforcement is also a very important component of Operation Clean Sweep because if we don't have enforcement, people are going to continue to litter. We want people to be accountable and responsible for their properties, for their property lines. By ordinance, Everyone is supposed to take care of their properties and keep them free and clear of litter. But not everyone does. The Code Enforcement Task Force works on this. There's also a great app that the City of New Bedford has, and it's called See Click Fix. And it's an awesome app that people can use 
to take a picture and report litter and dumping, graffiti, of any number of quality of life issues. And it goes right to the city departments where those uh, departments can get out there and take care of that issue. So I encourage people to use that app, see click fix. We can't all do everything, but we can all do something. I encourage and call out individuals and business leaders, homeowners, property owners, tenants, families, retired folks, students from elementary to universities, civic groups, to help keep New Bedford clean. Anyone, it doesn't just have to be New Bedford, anyone that's hearing this, we can all do something. The easiest thing to do is just to keep your own little part of the world clean. Take five minutes, 10 minutes a day to clean up the trash around your house and property lines or around work. Pick up litter wherever, litter wherever you can. If you're in the ballpark and you see litter accumulating, it's easy, just go pick it up. You'll find other people join you. You make new friends and you're doing something good for your community and your neighborhood. The new trash barrels that were referenced are an amazing way to keep New Bedford less littered. They have hinged lids, recycling goes in one, trash goes in the other, keeps the trash contained. All we ask you to do is use them properly, make sure that they're closed. That's gonna go a long way in keeping the Bedford clean, keeping dumpsters closed as well. What else can you do to help keep the Bedford clean? You can volunteer. Join an existing organized cleanup. Operation Clean Sweep holds fives and supports others. Get your neighbors, co-workers, club members together and create your own cleanup. You don't even have to wait for an organized cleanup. You can do it yourself, it's easy. Just grab some gloves and bags and pick up some trash. And report those violations that you see. If you're unable to physically pick up trash, you can report trash. There are other ways that you can help. You can adopt an area, you can adopt a highway, and you can sponsor a highway. Operation Clean Sweep and the City of New Bedford needs your help. I encourage everyone to do something. We are New Bedford. Let's take pride in our city. Join us for one of our upcoming cleanups in May, June, August, and September, and we have a beach cleanup at East Beach tomorrow with Teach for America. Thank you, and until next time, keep your little part of the world clean. <laughs> Oh, I love it when she talks like, she talks trash like that. <laughs> All right. All right. A little uh, glitter levity. Okay, so um, we, we also are very fortunate in New Bedford to have um, uh, a, a, a very, very well-run refuse district and uh, um, headed up by Scott Alphonse. And a key member of Scott's team is Marissa perez Dormitzer, who's the city's recycling coordinator, who... Um, is just as, as Lynn is fervent, is zealous about picking up trash on the streets, so too is uh, Marissa about recycling. And so you'll hear it from her. I don't want to steal her thunder, uh, but she does a fabulous job for us all year long. Marissa, come on up. Thank you, Mayor Mitchell. Good morning. A thank you to Sheriff Hodgson, um, Zebaruda, Ron LaBelle, as well as Councillor Carney and Operation Clean Sweep for all the great efforts to keep our city looking beautiful. Along with those larger efforts presented here today, residents should know that they have opportunities to keep their city and their homes beautiful. To help the city, the town of Dartmouth, and the Refuse District have partnered to offer several events that address spring cleaning efforts in the home. This Saturday, a household hazardous waste day will be happening um, from nine to noon at the Crapo Hill landfill. Some examples of hazardous waste accepted include oil-based paint, spray paint, stains, pesticides, waste fuels, and household cleaners that might have a label that says they are flammable or poisonous. On the other hand, Latex paint is not accepted because it is water-based and not considered hazardous. In its liquid form, latex paint does pose a disposal problem, however, 
And so before you discard it in your trash, we encourage you to pop the lid off and let it air dry, or you can mix in some sand or cat litter to help dry it out quicker. Other upcoming events include Drug Take Back Day, that's also this Saturday at the main police station. And then on May 21st, the city's Department of Community Services will hold, hold a paper shredding day to help residents properly handle their confidential documents. As residents clean out their homes, they may have a need to dispose or recycle a bulky item, such as a couch or a mattress or a television or a non-working lawnmower. And so all of these items can be picked up by ABC Disposal. Uh, you just need to give them a call at 508-999-2619, and then they can pick that up for you at the curb. Another great spring cleaning opportunity is at the Shawman Avenue Transfer Station. Many recyclable items are accepted, including large plastics, such as a broken laundry basket um, or plastic chairs electronics, use clothing and shoes, and extra single stream recycling that you may have from get-togethers and cookouts. But look, now looking at the big picture, since the automated collection program was implemented in June 2014, recycling is up and trash is down. The percentage of recyclables has increased an incredible 109% in 2015. This is compared to 2013 before the program was started. And looking at the first three months of 2016, residents recycled 22% more materials than the same period in 2015. And so it's clear that the program is working. <laughs> Thank you and thanks to all the residents who are taking part. So for more information, please don't hesitate to call our office at 508 nine seven nine one four nine three and more information is available on newbedfordrecycling.org and also on facebook under new bedford recycling so follow us and thank you nice job nice job all right thank you everybody i think that so all kidding aside for the moment um <laughs> it, it, i think what we try to impress upon people I, and i hope people take away from today's remarks is that we had folks in different components of government, different levels of government, who uh, feel passionately about uh, these little things, the trash on the street, um, disorder, the kinds of little things that sometimes we pick up subconsciously, but which matter a lot. When you sort of look at a place, you think, I like it or I don't. We make first impressions that way, but we make them based on, on these little details here and there. And so. Uh, uh, you know, it takes it, it takes people, it takes a level of commitment, a level of energy to get it right, and that's what's happening here in the Bedford, thanks to the, all the folks that you see up here and many others. With all that, let me take uh, let me take questions. Not all at once. <laughs> so this is Jim Phillips' last press conference. You know, Jim, Ted Williams went out with a home run. Kobe Bryant scored 60 in his going last game, and you're going out on a trash <laughs> press conference. Why is it important, Mayor, for the city's image to keep these highways straight and clean? Yeah, cities, cities, here. See, cities rise and fall depending on whether people want to root uh, in them. And people pick up on environmental cues. When I say environmental, I mean in the most general sense. If, if things look like they're out of order, if they look unkempt, if they look don't look comfortable, people aren't going to want to be there. So, you know, especially in these gateways, you know, they matter a lot. These are uh, folks' introduction to the city, and so it matters that we keep them up. That's why the sheriff's work uh, along those lines is, is very important, but you have to constantly keep at it. And of course, New Bedford's not unique in this way, and, and cities aren't unique either, but it's a, uh, it's, it's something that, we, um, that we've got to keep up with, and it takes some, uh, takes some energy. Anybody else? Can you go more into the crime aspect, like the idea that the cleaner it is, the less likely it will crime in that area? Yeah, I mean, as the sheriff was alluding to, there is there is, there is uh, credence to the broken window theory of, of, uh, of crime enforcement, of, of law enforcement, which is to say that um, you know, crime tends to 
uh, take root in places that people don't care about it. Blighted buildings and weeds growing in, in a particular area, graffiti. I mean, all those things are signals to folks, to other folks, to stay away. And that's uh, you know that's where you know bad things happen. It happens not only here; it happens everywhere across the world like that. And so, you know, to the extent that we can just sort of keep things up a little bit more and. and uh, set a good example for others to, to set those kinds of cues to, uh, to the private sector so people clean up their properties a little bit more. Um, I think we're better off we'll all be. All right, I think that does it. Jim Phillips, Thanks. congratulations. This is your last press conference. I know Jim doesn't want me to belabor this, but I just want to say while the cameras are rolling, I'll just keep it brief. Jim, thanks for everything. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.